All right, today I'm going to show you how to create this thing, and it's all created with some simple effects from After Effects, and I'm using these vertical lines that I've looped and animated in a previous tutorial to accomplish this. So let's get into it. Okay, in the last one I showed you guys how to create these uh, vertical lines and how to have them looping like this. Uh, right now I'm on a timeline that is six seconds long and it's uh, running a perfect loop of these vertical lines. I'm going to show you guys how to create some really cool effects with this thing. Um, if you guys want to learn how to do this and you didn't catch my last video, um, I'll leave a link in the description and I'll probably put it on top somewhere here if I can. So let's get into it. Uh, the first effect I will go over with you is very basic, but uh, very useful. It's called Tint. So go into Effects, type in Tint, and this will just allow us to change the color of our, of our white bars to whatever we want. Um, so that's really easy to do, basic. I'll make mine green and hit OK but essentially map to uh, white to essentially anything that's white in the frame uh, or on this particular uh, comp that I'm affecting will turn green. Um, the next thing, if you type in HLS, it'll bring up the color balance under color correction. You can put that under there and you can keyframe the hue and when you are changing this around, you can have this really cool colorized effect uh, and I'll go through the color wheel if you'd like. So I can uh, go to the front of my timeline here, click on the stopwatch, go all the way to the end and I can hit or punch in 359 degrees and it'll go through the entire color wheel and cycle through it in a perfect loop. And this loop is six seconds. Uh, you could just do it uh, any other way if you'd want it to, speed it up. So go to the end where your keyframe is and you know you could just type up in here six revolutions and it'll do the same thing, but just faster. See? Okay, super cool. Moving on. Um, I'm gonna turn this off for now, leave tint there. So first real effect to affect the look of this thing. We'll go to optics, whoops, click in here, type in optics, and you're looking for optics compensation, and we're going to put that in there. Now, it does nothing when you put it in, but when you start playing with the field of view, uh, you can increase this number, and you're just going to get one of these things. So you can warp it so much that it becomes a ball and it'll look like it's spinning in 3D space. It's actually just an illusion, but looks pretty cool. Uh, and this is what it looks like if you've got it dialed down just a little bit more. Okay, and then you can reverse this by the click of a button right here, and then you get these really cool warped lines, and um, the optics are just getting warped uh, through this effect. And I find it's a really easy way to achieve this kind of effect. Moving on. So I'm going to delete that. The next one, type in wave, and you're looking for wave warp. Put that in there. Now this thing you can do a lot. Uh, I'm not going to go through everything, but uh, basically what I'm trying to show here is that you can just go into After Effects, go into some of these effects, especially underneath the Distort tab, and just start dragging things around here and start experimenting. So we'll leave it. It's um, we'll leave the wave type there, and I'll just start playing with the wave height. I can even hit the space bar so you can see what that looks like. You know, it might not look too interesting yet. We can start playing with the direction, and now you're getting something really crazy. And then by just changing the wave type here to square, you're getting another effect. All right, the next one I think is the liquify tool, again, underneath the distort menu. So we're bringing that in. I'm just going to select uh, this hand here, this finger pushing on, on a line. Open up the 
wave tool options. I'm just going to increase my brush size a bit. There we go. Um, brush pressure. Oh, don't need to increase that much. And um, all right, just do one of these. And then if I hit play, you're going to see that uh, the lines are now following the warp that I've created. And so you can imagine if uh, you were to just draw in a little bit more, it would get even crazier. What's wrong with this is once you've created your initial warp, what you can do is come to the beginning, hit the stopwatch on distort mesh percentage, and maybe I want to bring it down to zero and animate that in. So maybe halfway at three seconds, we can go to 100%. And then by the time you loop out, it's back to 0%. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so that's the liquify tool. You can get pretty crazy with that. We'll move on to the next one. So mesh warp, that's also fun. All right, so over here, you're gonna see a mesh has been created and uh, you, can cr you can change the rows and columns. And what that does is basically where when it, whenever these lines intersect, it'll give you a part of the mesh you can move around. So maybe we'll just make mine a little bit more simple, four by four. And uh, we can go over here and you see, it'll just take whatever's on that mesh and warp it a little bit. So we can do that. Take another one here. You're getting a nice warping effect there, and it could be what you're going for. Next is Turbulent Displace. And this one kind of just warps it already. If you just uh, drag it on top, you'll get these nice wavy lines. But then you can get even crazier than that if you pump up the amount. You'll start to get these nice circles and... Uh, you're really getting into some crazy warping there. You can also increase the complexity and get this. We'll go to the next one here, CC Lens. This is how the lines are when you apply CC Lens to it. This is what it'll do. So an interesting look, and of course, you can start playing with these parameters, and I'll give you some different warping. The last thing I'm going to show you is um, how these things can stack up on top of each other to make some really cool, fun animations. So you've got your lines coming across, you've got the tint on, and let's just play with, um, let's play with the last one we brought in, CC Lens. And we can do one of these things here. Then maybe Turbulent Displace. And we'll crank up the amount here to do maybe something like that. And now you've got like this sort of blob thing getting animated. Next, what I want to do is bring in a blur. There we go, fast box blur. Double click on that to bring it in. And uh, just going to increase the radius here. There we go, that's how it looks like with the blur. Stop that. 
And now what we can do is we can duplicate those lines, uh, the lines comp. So control C to copy and control V. We'll just rename that to lines top. All right. So with this one, uh, I'm going to remove the fast box blur. And what's that, what that's creating is um, this glow around around my my animation. So if I just hide the bottom layer, see, it's creating the glow. And if we play it back, because it's the same uh, same comp that that's being affected here and just duplicated, it's the exact same animation that's matching on top of itself, just it's missing a blur. Um, all right, so now what I'm going to do is type in, oops, comp this, control enter V and bring it to the middle, like so. And I'm um, going to open up my character panel. And over here, it needs to, so I'm clicking on the fill color and no fill color right here. Boom, I'm going to click on that. And now I have, I have an outline stroke of my, my type. And the reason I have that is because of this square here, stroke color. You can go and pick the green. You can even use the color picker here to make sure it's the same green. Click OK. And um, one fun feature here is that we can click um, on the blending mode. And if you don't see the blending mode, you just have to toggle it here. And we're going to go to Stencil Luma. And when we play this back, you're sort of presenting this dark, mysterious scene with your type. Super cool. And for a different look, is just switch these two. So basically we're now filling out the type with some color and removing the stroke. So because of this blending mode, it's just saying wherever there's color, wherever there's a fill, you're taking the background and showing it through the type. And we're gonna play that back. And that's what that looks like. To make this a little bit more obvious, if you wanted to, uh, because the P is not uh, completely showing, uh, you can duplicate your type layer. And I am going to go on top here and just make it normal and switch this over. So now we have no fill. So it's completely transparent in the middle and we have the stroke showing, which is green. And you can play with your stroke width here if you wanted it at four. I think two was good enough for me. Maybe even one. There we go. And now you've got something a little bit more obvious. So maybe you still want to have a cool background showing up there with those lines. And if I just take this thing, which is what I want to do, copy paste it, click on lines, shift, click up to comp this too. I'm going to right click and pre-compose and hit OK. We can put our background layer with the lines. We'll just call it BG for now. Um, and this contains the same animation, but with the fast box blur. And maybe for good measure, we can, we can see what it looks like if I just increase the blur even more. So now we've got this really cool animation and all we used were these vertical lines from the beginning. And you can see how powerful they are if you're just utilizing some simple distort effects on top of it and you're gonna achieve some really cool results. Um, I hope this was helpful and you know, it doesn't end here. You can take as many effects as you want, pile them on top of each other. 
I'm going to probably do a couple more of these tutorials with the vertical lines because there's a few more things that I do with them that I really enjoy and think are, are really interesting. So stay tuned for that and hope you enjoyed the tutorial. See you later. <laughs>